imagination to think of good reasons to keep on keeping on, keep on, keep it on. Got to make the best of the best of best bad situation. surrender to this sacred, precious, present moment. Allow your jaw to unclench. And allow your shoulders to relax as you just follow your breath. In and out. And just notice, there's no past, there's no future. It's just this moment. There's nowhere else to be. Nothing else to do. So just surrender to this moment right here, right now, as you just witness your breath. Mm, there really is only oneness, only spirit. And every separation that we create between anything in that divine thread that runs through everything in existence, it's an illusion. Every time we judge, we compare, or see a difference between us and anything else, a viewpoint, an attitude, a physical body, a tone, a mindset, the differences that you see, they're just illusion. Because at the core of each of us <coughs> is wholeness, perfection, pure, and we are enlightened. So when we see ourselves as separate, it's an illusion. And when we see someone having more than what we think we have, that, that's an illusion too. We can see everyone in our life as a mirror, a reflection of us. And that's why we say that the eyes are the windows of the soul. So when we look someone's, and we look at them and we see their eyes, we are actually seeing ourselves. And that's namaste. I honor the divine light in you that is also in me. And when we don't see the divine light within ourselves and others, then that's an illusion. So let's experience our oneness. Let's experience that feeling of no separation. Let's allow, in this moment, to release all divisions between us and the world outside of us. And anything that you are grasping for, anything you're attached to, Anything you distance yourself from, it's, it's really all an illusion. There's no past or future, there's only this moment. 
So surrender yourself to this perfect, precious moment. And as you follow your breath in and out, just allow yourself to become one, to merge, to melt into one, and let's just let's just float for a few moments in the silence. Let's just make our way back into the sanctuary. Take a deep breath. And gently open up your eyes and take a look around at everyone who shared this experience with you. And then just smile. Namaste. Thank you, Anita. I am so calm. Namaste. I have missed you. So good to be there. You are. 
if you would just lower or close your eyes and know with me that as I am speaking my word of truth, I am speaking for each and every one of us. And so just allowing myself to fall into that centered space and that place that always knows that God is, that life is, that truth is, that love is, at the center of all. I just allow my awareness to expand into all that the infinite is, love and peace, wholeness and health, truth, prosperity, and creativity. And knowing that that divine urge, that divine impulse that is within me to express myself fully in this creative vehicle that I am, I know that each and every person hearing my voice, too, is expressing themselves in all of their glory, bringing that light, that truth, that love of the infinite in experience and in action in each of our lives. And so I know as this service unfolds today that each of us are blessed by the experience that each of us take the message that Reverend Stacy shares and we see ways in which we can put this in place in our lives and truly change our lives for the better. <coughs> allowing ourselves to discard what never needs to be expressed again, allowing us to take on and don that new life, that new way of being that truly changes and touches our lives and each person that gets to be a part of it. I know that we are the blessing and we are blessed. And I know by means of this service, the music by our beloved Patty, supported by Dave's magical piano, knowing that they touch our hearts, that every word that is spoken, every hug that is felt, every smile that is shared, we are forever better for it. And so I bless this service knowing it is already complete and done and a success in the mind of God. I bless each and every person that has given themselves the gift of being at this center today. And so for all this good, I just say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I release my word into the perfect action of the law knowing it is done. I let it be, and together we say, so it is. Matter of fact, I'm going to release and let go. Do you know what I mean? Do you mind if I sing a little bit for you? I mean, feel free.
get myself reacquainted with our virtues. <laughs> we love you so much and welcome back. Welcome back. We've been praying with and for you. I felt it. Yes, I know you did. Russell has something to show us. <laughs> Twenty-year-old Amanda Gorman is the first Youth Poet Laureate of the United States. Pretty impressive. And in honor of Independence Day, the West LA native wrote a poem named The Believer's Hymn for the Republic and performed it with the Boston Pops. to be exact, when founders dare to declare the world's most revolutionary act, a pact sworn for liberty and equality. Out of many, was born one people, a teeming nation made of nations at its very foundation, a dream for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. words do not go diminished, but also so that the work does not go unfinished. For it's not just in a declaration of independence, but the everyday declaration of its descendants that make a people equal. It is for right and our goal to remember these words scratched on the scroll so we may live them and heal our nation whole. We roll up our sleeves, we believe in the dream and these American stories in the glory of the struggle. For it is from our struggle that comes our nation's strength. For the lengths that we fight for what is right is the fullest measure of our country's might. And while we cannot shake or cast aside our past, every day we write the future. Together we sign it, together we declare it, we share it. Americans know one another by our love of liberty, when in fact we were liberated by our love for one another. We understand that a house divided cannot stand, and so let us make a pact to be the country that acts as compassionate as we are courageous. In the Declaration's pages, we write a new order for the ages, where out of many, we are one, bright as a sun and bold as an eagle, a nation of all people, by all people, for all people.
for what, about half a year now or so? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I am rather soft spoken. Um, I've been here about, again, what, a half year? I think? Maybe a little longer. And I've really come to enjoy being here with all your people. I just, it's nice to be surrounded by so many people that really care about the world and about life and about God or anything else. Um, what I used to do at one time, not that long ago, but a long, a little while back, was teach meditation. And I thought, what can I contribute to this church that would help the church and help the people here who are becoming my friends? And I thought, meditation. And I have a technique that I learned a long time ago, and I've been practicing for years. And it's very helpful on many levels. But today I'm just going to talk basically about the physical benefits of it, even though it's also a very spiritual technique. And you all got this when you came in. If you want to follow along with that, you can, or you just listen, it's up to you. The meditation is very simple. It doesn't require any effort on your part. Anywhere that you feel comfortable, you can do it. I've done it, God help me, in bathrooms at work. Because sometimes you just cannot get away and the bathroom is the only place you can breathe your way to. So I've spent five minutes of meditation sometimes on a stressful day and I needed extra energy. You can do it in your bedroom, your living room, your car, anywhere. You don't have to be in a certain position. You don't have to have any music on. You don't have to hear bells, whistles. You don't have to stand on your head. You don't have to bend like a pretzel. The only thing you have to do is be comfortable and relax. It's very simple and it connects you directly to God. And that's something that we all like and we all love. Now, the great part about this is not just that it's connecting you to the source, because we all want that. We all need that. We all love that. But it also affects the body. There's been a lot of uh, physiological research done on meditation over the years since I've been teaching it. And it's been found that it pre creates a profound rest for the body. Now, I don't know how the rest of you are with your resting time, your sleeping time. I know it's helped me immensely. So it's very good for getting a deep rest. It's also good for relaxing. Like maybe you're in a tense situation, you want to learn how to relax, you want to learn how to feel better in a new situation. Uh, I know the first time I came here, I was like, whoa, you know, they're all hugging me. <laughs> I love hugs, though. I'm not, not that I'm averse to hugs. It's just I've never been hugged by so many people, and there's so, such wonderful people, too. So thank you for that. That was a nice eye-opener for me. Um, besides that, the biggest thing that it contributes to physiologically, and it's actually at the core of almost everything that we deal with on a day-by-day -day basis is stress. Is there anyone in here that doesn't experience stress? <laughs> Raise your hand. Be the first one to cast the stone. <laughs> Pardon the pun. We all experience that at different levels depending upon our, our, our personal, family, work, environments. But we all experience it. And actually, stress is not something that just goes away because you go, okay, it's all gone. It doesn't. It actually leaves a physical imprint on your brain and in your nervous system. Dr. Hans Selye, who did a lot of research on stress, discovered that it creates a little chemical that goes between your nerve and it. It's called lactic acid. Now, if you see some food that's had lactic acid added to it, avoid it. Because it's really going gonna, gonna to have an adverse effect on your body. Lactic acid accumulates. It breaks down your nervous system. It makes you tired before you're tired. It makes you, your immune system weakened. This makes you vulnerable to any number of illnesses, blood pressure problems, anxiety, illnesses. It makes you much more susceptible to illness. The meditation that, that I'm teaching, you only have to do it twice a day. And you go, twice a day? Yeah, the good thing is it's only like 10 to 20 minutes. And sometimes you're going to go longer. I sat down to meditate and I just had such a long day. I'm, I'm sure the reverends over here, uh, Cheryl and Stacy, have been through that, not many of you as well. You're so tired, you go, I just want to rest. You know, and when you meditate, if you fall asleep, you're not losing your benefits. Once you've made that connection, you still get what your body needs, what your whole spirit needs. It's still going to come through to you. So you never have to feel like you're losing anything. Anyway, I, I, I think I'm about run out of time here. I'm going to be teaching uh, courses, three courses. 
Uh, they're going to be during the day. Uh, we're not open at night, I guess. Sometimes. Sometimes. We'll, well, talk. well, we'll talk about that if we can. If you have some kind of a schedule that's impossible for you to come during the day on one of the times that's open, then let me know and I'll try and arrange something for you. Okay? Um, it'll take about an hour of your time, not, maybe not a whole hour, but I like to have an hour so that way I can lead you into the meditation. It's called Guided Surrender Meditation because I'm guiding you into it. I want to make sure you have the best experience in the first time. I'm going to meditate with you, take you through the process, and then leave you to enjoy it on your own. Second, the second uh, instruction, I'm going to have you come in and you're going to meditate with me again. And when you meditate with other people, Jesus said this during his, his sermons, where two or more gathered in my name, there is the power. And it's the truth. You, you all know that from just being here. So when you meditate with somebody that's already meditating deep, it helps you to go deeper. You have more contact. And of course, we all want to open up that floodgate to God. So we do that. The third time is the group meeting. And it's really good to have the group meeting because the group meeting you can see all the other faces are doing the same thing. And we'll share experiences, answer questions, make sure that you're okay and you're solid. Now once we get enough of us going and stuff, we can probably, with their blessings and that, have the regular meetings here to meditate and the reverends might want to do some lectures or something during that time. Or maybe we can incorporate it. I, I don't know. I haven't gone that far with it yet. So anyway, that's going to be Three different meetings, three, three courses total, um, three classes in one course, and there's a, a love offering of $50 to do it. I have a sign-up sheet for those of you who want to sign up today. I'll remain behind so you can find a time that suits you, and if not then, then I'll leave the sheets with the reverends, and then you can contact them for this time. Okay, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, John. You're welcome. I would like to think of this song, actually, as a meditation. It's a song about creativity and rainbows. <laughs>
Senior ministers, along with Reverend Cheryl, Reverend Dan is taking a leave of absence, um, and I'm happy to be here today. Um, the theme of the month is creativity, freedom, creativity, and choice. Yeah, freedom, creativity, and choice. And the talk title today is creativity. And creativity. When I first started, um, I guess started as a minister. One of the things that I would probably say that I would most likely most did not want to talk about would be creativity because I thought that I was not creative by nature at all. I absolutely thought I wasn't creative. You could not have told me that. You couldn't have sold me that. I would not have believed you, right? Maybe I had a little, some skills with putting some music together for my friends as far as picking songs that suited them or maybe for a service. But beyond that, maybe a few skills, maybe a few skills with um, some cooking. Maybe. <laughs> Not for large groups. I don't do large groups. That's why you ever see Reverend Cheryl doing that. Um, but beyond that, I really did not think that I had an imagination or that I was creative. Anybody else ever feel like that? People that don't draw, people that don't paint, people that don't, um, you know, none of that. People that don't sing. She has her hand raised. Are you kidding me? Like <laughs> People that don't have the skill sets to play the keyboard, like Dave, right? People that, photography, right? I, I, I don't do much, I don't do that. You ask me to draw something in class, I'm like, I'm done, I'm not, I'm not in this class. I'm no, I am no longer participating in this class, I'm done. Right, the little foil ball, for those of us that, that um, had um, Science of Mind 101, and you, and you have to be creative and make something out of this foil, piece of foil, and everybody's got like stars and rainbows and, and unicorns, and I'm like, I, I did a ball. <laughs> right? That's not what I think of my creative, like this one who sings as well. Yeah, it's just funny what we think of as creative, right? So, kind of Science of Mind 101, right? Spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, body, right? That's the foundation of the teaching. Spirit, God, God is triune in nature. Spirit, soul, body. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, for those more traditional, um, more traditional um, upbringing. And so, the spirit, love. Um, the soul, which is law. The law just says yes. We plant the seeds um, into the spirit, and we create form. So, that is how spirit creates. God, if you will, and that's also how we create. So obviously we're always creating, correct? Right? We're always creating. Sometimes for the good, sometimes not so much. Sometimes not so much. Um, so I have realized over the past five years that I am creative by nature. And so in that, I created this outline for um, CSL this week. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so what that means, to those of you, which is just funny how spirit works. Um, so 400 centers participate in one talk if they choose to participate. And so someone writes the outline. And so this week was my outline. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just funny that it's creativity. It just cracks me up, right? God is a crack up. Mm -hmm. um, and so I also chose the book, which is called The Sun Does, the Sun Does Shine. And it's a book about Anthony Ray Hinton. We'll get back to that. It was part of Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey Summer Book Club last, last year. And so we create. We plant the seeds. We plant the seeds of love. We get love. We plant the seeds of not love. We get not love. Right? Easy. Easy peasy. <sighs> you know, I looked outside the window. <clears throat> Um, this morning, and I, it's so easy to see how nature creates. You just, you, it's everywhere, it's creative, you just see it so easily. And um, you can also see it when you walk up to the center. You ever notice that when you walk up to the center, you come in this grand hallway, and it always looks different, you know, seasonally. Beth and Jane um, just recreate this place all the time. And I asked Beth, 
how she does this. It's like, how do you create this all the time out of, you know, seemingly, you know, they were just knickknacks or whatever. And she showed me pictures of things on, on her um, living room table and just all of this stuff. And it's just, it just looks like stuff. And then she puts it in here and it's just beautiful. It's magnificent. And I'm just like, well, what's the secret to that? You know, how do you and Jane do that? And they're, then you're two separate people, right? So that makes it even harder to work with somebody. You know, it's easy when you don't have to do any, you know, I just do what I want to do by myself. But to have that flow and to allow that to turn into something beautiful, it's just amazing. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth. And we see it with Patty and Dave, don't we? Yes. Right? Just as John said, we're two or more gathered. I mean, it, it just comes into, it's exponentially is just even more beautiful. Reverend Cheryl and I do that. Reverend Cheryl Dan and I do that. So it's three times. It's easy, right? You've got all the imagination in the world to use at that point, right? We see our minister of prayer team do it. You know, one of them, it's great, Lauren, beautiful prayer, by the way, thank you. Right? But when they surround us with their love and their light, I mean, you can feel that energy move to a whole different level. It's just amazing. Our teachers, you've got Kim and Gina back there teaching. We've got Kathy, who also, I mean, Kathy, that's just a whole nother, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't touch that, as MC Hammer would say. I mean, it's just amazing. You've got Clem, Clem and Cheryl, that's a whole nother thing, too. I mean, you know, you've got, you know, Cheryl, I was teasing her last week because I had the vision that I went out and, and party, and then she just created all of this stuff. How about food that's red, white, and blue? Oh, and it's only red, white, and blue. And how about we do that? We. <laughs> so Cheryl and the hospitality team create this beautiful spread of food last week. I mean, it's just amazing the things that we can create when we put our minds to them. The imagination is limitless. It's just absolutely limitless. So the first quote I have, I have lots of quotes. And I could read them all myself and say that they're mine. <laughs> oh, also one more. Carmen and the knitting and crochet circle. You know, we sat there at a retreat, an a minister of prayer retreat, and we're just throwing out ideas. What can we do? How can we get this teaching out to more of the community? Because, folks, the days of people coming in here, are kind of, you know, that's not how we do things anymore. We watch things on, on YouTube. So we've got to go out and still get the teaching out there, but we've got to be creative in how we do that. Right? How many friends and neighbors have you invited that you still haven't seen here? Not that they don't want to be here. They just, maybe they've got, they've got something else to do. Maybe that particular thing that you're talking about doesn't move them to come here. So Carmen and that knitting and crochet and I'm, um, circle was amazing. I saw Joan, I saw Taya, and it's cross-generational. Just makes my heart smile. Makes my heart smile. So, sometimes a situation, a situation arises where you need an entirely new idea. Sometimes. Most times, I would say. The only thing that's not, is changeless is spirit, right? So we always find ourselves in if we're not prepared, if we're not staying ready, um, we have to create something new. You know, Reverend Dan stepped away on behalf of Reverend Dan, which is what he should have done, right? Because he was finding himself not being, feeling, um, feeling tired. Probably not feeling creative, which is very important to Reverend Dan. Probably not being able to fulfill all he wants to do with his husband and partner and, and, with, and with work. That's what we're supposed to do. And so when creativity, when you really see creativity be magnificent is when that kind of stuff happens. When the weed grows up in the garden, you're like, stop. Now what, spirit? Now what do I do? That's when you trust the process and you will rely on your creativity. The so creativity, in my definition, is simply you using your, your gifts and talents and connecting with spirit, that law portion of spirit, to make something new happen. That's creativity. That's creativity. 
That's what we're called to do. And ministers, geez, we do it all the time, right? Seemingly. But we all do it all the time. We all do it all the time. Um, so sometimes the situation arises where you need an entirely new idea. Ernest Holmes, page 85. We have um, the Ministry of Prayer team did a book study online. You see, I have lots of books this week. Um, it's called The Second Half of Life. And Tina Bo, practitioner Tina Bo Grossman, is going to be teaching this class in August. And um, some, of us have, some of us have reached the second half of life, I would say, perhaps age-wise, perhaps um, not just age-wise, something has transpired. Maybe kids grow up. Maybe you're 40 and your kids are grown and they're out of the house. Well, it's a little unlikely, but perhaps. Um, perhaps you have a second career. Perhaps you've lost your old job and now you have to get a new job. But something transpires where there is a new mark, demarcation of life. So that's what this book discusses and how to really, um, it's kind of geared more towards the aging process and, and how do we, you know, wrap up and wind up and that kind of stuff. It kind of ends that way. But that we, can, we can talk about that on many levels. And so Tina's teaching this class and we did this book study online for four weeks. And it was just amazing the things that we hear, that we were to or more, more were gathered once again. It's just lovely to see the ideas and the, the molds that are created from that kind of space. What really impressed me was many of these practitioners had not been on a Zoom call because we, did it. we didn't come to the center, we didn't do it traditionally, but we did it online. Many of these practitioners have taken an online class, and they did it. I saw all of them. I saw all of them, right? To create something new, you have to do something new, normally, right? I want to create joy, right? I can't always keep doing the, okay, well, Reverend Dan's going to talk today. Well, no, Reverend Dan's not, because Reverend Dan's sleeping right now. <laughs> I still want to create joy here. I still want the center to be thriving. So i got to create something new, right? Right? We see athletes do it all the time. You see that Coco Golf? I was so excited. Coco Golf beat Venus Williams this week. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, it's awesome. The soccer team, right? The women's soccer. I mean, you practice things all day long, but when push comes to shove, what do you do when stuff changes? You can practice all the time. You know, what, what do we do if Patty has an emergency? Right? That's what it's about. That's what the teaching, that's where you really rely on the teaching. So many people come into the teaching and they, okay, took the foundations. I'm good. I'm good. Right? I got my man, I got my, my car, I got my, my house, I got my this, I got my that. I got my perfect job. I'm good. Then the man leaves. Or the woman leaves. Uh, well, uh, what had happened was I forgot who I was. Your life can't depend on one thing. You've got to be able to shift and move. If I go outside and my car's not there, and I want to get home, I'm going to get home. I can walk, I can drive, I can take a bus, I can Uber, I can lift, I can skip, I can roll, I can pirouette. <laughs> well, maybe not. I could burpee, if I could burpee. <laughs> right? But I could sit on my, at my desk and dream that I'm home, I'm still home. Not in the physical sense, but metaphysically, I'm still home. What do you do to always know that you can create joy? That's what the teaching is about. So, back to the second half of life. So that's kind of what we talked about these last four weeks. So Tina's not going to offer it online, um, but I would encourage you to, um, to get the book and talk about it. Um, the second quote I have is, stop trying to die and learn how to live. Mm -hmm. Ernest Holmes from this thing called you. So many times we just practice doing the same old thing. And the same old thing doesn't work. And it's not bringing you joy. It's not bringing you joy, it's not bringing me joy. It's not bringing you and me joy, it's not bringing the world joy. Which is not creating a world that works for everyone. Or anyone. So just do something new.
this book. Well, no, let me talk about this first. Took another class this week, this past four weeks. It's called Practical Mysticism. That Practical Mysticism, which will, I will be teaching in um, late August, from Is that it? Yeah. And it really talks about that idea of wait for it, wait for it, not having to use prayer necessarily. That idea of I'm just downloaded with spirit and I'm walking and I'm trusting the process. It's a whole different realm, a whole different consciousness. Daisy was talking about her life as a practitioner and she's just guided to that next step. There's a trust in that that comes as we mature. And whole new trust. And sometimes you forget about it, right? I get so used to, it's a great tool, um, please. If, if there is no better tool than prayer. But what if I could just wake up and know and not have to call the minister of prayer to What if I could just be in that space? That's a whole different realm and a whole different level of maturity and trusting the process. But until the, I get there, I'm going to keep calling on the Minister of Prayer to you. <laughs> Mind you. Uh, this book is by Joel Goldsmith. It's called The Contemplative Life. I'm going to read a little bit. In scripture, we're told that his reign, I'm going to use it, I'm going to speak it the way it's written because it's too wordy if I don't. So my apologies for it not being gender neutral. In scripture, we are told that his reign falls on the just and unjust. As far as God is concerned, there is neither Greek nor Jew, neither bond nor free. The master made that very clear when he said, Call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. If Jesus had meant this applied only to the people who were listening to him, then of course, according to that, God is the father only of the Hebrews, because Jews were talking to his fellow because Jesus was talking to his fellow Hebrews. In his day, there was no Christian church, nor were there any Christians. There were only Jews, and Jesus was one of them, a rabbi in their midst. And if he had intended these words only for those to whom he was speaking, we would have to admit then that, Jews, that Jews are the only ones who can claim God as their father, which we know is not true. As a matter of fact, however, anyone with even a smattering of spiritual insight knows that the import of Jews' teaching that he was not speaking to any one group. What he was doing was voicing truth, just as if he had said two times two is four while speaking of cabbages, but not meaning that only two times four cabbages is, two times two cabbages is four, but meaning two times two is four, whether applied to cabbages or kings. And so when he tells us to call no man your father upon earth, he is not addressing you who are reading this, nor was he addressing those who are sitting before him listening to him. He was speaking to the world, proclaiming a message that had been given him to him of God. Years later, Paul carried that same message to the pagans, the Europeans, even to the atheists. And always he was voicing a spiritual truth, which was not meant to apply to any specific group of people, but was a spiritual truth, which had always been, is, and always will be a universal truth. Therefore, it must be the truth about Greek and Jew. It must be the truth about you and me. It must be the truth about white and black. There is but one Father, but one God. No person can ever hope for spiritual entitlement, unless enlightenment, unless he can first of all recognize that there is only one creative principle in this world. Whether it cre creates cabbages or kings, whether it creates the Greek or the Jew, there is only one creative principle, and it is located not in the mountains, nor yet in the temple of Jerusalem. Its location is neither low here or low there, but within you. And it makes no difference who, this, who the you may be. It makes no difference if it is you in the hospital, you in the prison, the you in business, or the you in some art or profession. The kingdom of God is within you. And the kingdom of God is a spirit, not a superhuman being, but a spirit. So that leads me to the book of the month. 
Um, the sun does shine. How I find how I found life and freedom on death row by Anthony Rahan. Um, great book. And I know it sounds kind of oh, I don't want to read a story about jail about somebody on death row. It's gonna be really sad. That's gonna be really depressing. I don't want to do that. It's not that kind of book. It is in many ways. It's a, it's a book that reads like, like a novel, but it's fact-based. And it's about this, this man, Anthony Rahan, who went to jail, who was convicted. Uh, he was convicted of um, killing someone, and he didn't do it. it happens a lot. I think Brian Stevenson, if you're familiar with the attorney Brian Stevenson, he said probably one in 10 on death row, especially in the South are not, um, not guilty. But they are convicted because they're poor. They're poor and they can't get an attorney. So this man's from Alabama, um, and the good news is he gets out. Spoiler alert. So he gets out. And um, it's just amazing the stuff that he goes through at his enlightenment from there and how he used the creative principle or the law or the Holy Ghost, whatever you want to call it. He used that creative nature within him to make his life good even though he wasn't um, even thinking that he might get up. He, he, he had hoped, hoped is better than despair, and that's the only word I can use in this situation. He had hoped that he would because he knew he was innocent, but in that, he decided he was gonna make home where he was. He created love where he was. Um, funny how spirit works because, um, you know, I wrote this outline eight months ago, um, something like that, eight or nine months ago. And, you know, the book was getting quite a bit of publicity. Then, you know, it just drops off the face of the earth and you're like, oh, well. So I kind of forgot about it and uh, looked at my notes and I was like, oh, who wrote this? <laughs> They're brilliant. <laughs> um, but I'm like, I have no idea what this book says. <laughs> Ready and humble. Um, but I did remember that, you know, I'm not one, I'm more of a visionary type person. I'm more of the, um, I'm not the, the details, it's a Laura and Cheryl thing. Um, that's just not my thing. So the book really touched me. What, what, what did it say? Uh, well, something like, um, the book, what, what is amazing to me, I lost my chance thought for a moment, but what was amazing to me is that Spirit knew that about me. And what Spirit and I created together was uh, Oprah Winfrey having um, the video of, of the interview with, with Oprah speaking with Anthony Ray Hinton mm -hmm. on, and it showed a couple weeks ago. And so I taped it. And so I got to see all of the details that I wanted to remember. So always, there's always a way. There's always a way. And, and then the documentary about Brian Stevenson. And then there's something about in the Oprah magazine this month. So when you're, in, you're in the, when you're in the flow of things, things flow to you. You don't have to worry and fret, and what am I gonna do now? If my car's not there, it, that kind of would not be, that's not what I want, but I'll still get home. I don't have to stay in that condition of being unhappy, is the point. This man, Anthony Ray Hinton, I mean, it's a beautiful story about how he loved his mother, how he loved his friend Lester, which just moves me to tears. Um, Lester was his best friend, who he'd known since he was six years old, and Lester drove 260 miles one way every single Friday to see his best friend in, in prison for 30 years. What kind of commitment is that? Am I sure that's something you would do? I, on the other hand, probably not so much. <laughs> you know, maybe 200 miles, but I'm not going 260. I mean, this, I mean, the interview, if you get a chance, if you don't want to read the book, just watch the interview of this man who is just such, he's so grace-filled. He talks about when he first got convicted and he waited for 14 months to get the conviction and how he didn't speak. He was so angry 
and he just could not make his voice, he couldn't hear his voice. And so he just shut down completely. He was angry because his, he loved his mother and he believed in his mother so much and his mother told him, if something ever goes wrong, you can always go to the police. You'll always be safe with the police. Be safe with the police. There's justice in the United States. And so if you don't do anything wrong, you will never be convicted. Could you imagine the disappointment and the betrayal that this man felt? And yet still, he used his imagination to create luncheons with the Queen of England. He said he was married to Halle Berry for 15 years. <laughs> he said it was the most beautiful um, the most beautiful marriage because she never asked for a dime. <laughs> he won Wimbledon five times. Freedom comes from here. It doesn't come from your condition. Freedom comes from your thought. It's a choice that you make on a minute by minute basis all the time. And we have got to know that. These can look as despair and desolate and just downright horrible. But I have the choice in my mind to create something different. And if I do, you all do as well. A couple quotes from the book before I, before I let you move on to your next thing. <coughs> Anthony Ray Hinton said, I had a choice to reach out to these, to these men or to stay in the dark alone. I walked over to my bed and got on my hands and knees. I reached my arm under my bed and felt around through the dust and dirt until the tips of my fingers brushed my Bible. It had been there too long. This man had lost his mom, but I still had mine, and she wouldn't care for my Bible to, put, to be collecting filth. Even here, I could still be me. You see, what brought his voice back was that his, the person in the cell next to him lost his mom, and so he was wailing. And so that's why Anthony Rank Hinton started speaking again. It says in the book, I wasn't expecting to end three years of silence. It was a revelation to realize that I wasn't the only man on death row. I was born with the same gift from God we are all born with. The impulse to reach out and lessen the suffering of another human being. It was a gift, and we each had a choice whether to use this gift or not. I realized that the state of Alabama could steal my future and my freedom, but they couldn't steal my soul or my humanity. He says, someday I was going to walk out, of, uh, walk out of here, but until then, I was going to use my mind to travel the world. I had so many places to go and people to see and things to learn. He started a book club. He started a book club, club in prison. He taught people how to read. Well, it's not the most educated man. See, he took his circumstances and he used them for good to create the joy that he could in the place that he could. That's not what we're all called to do. I could leave the row in my mind, and now I was going to show these guys that they could leave too. I remember being in school and reading a book about California and getting so lost in it, I swear I could so smell the salt water of the Pacific Ocean. It's just a commitment to your imagination and allow your creativity to run free until you can move, until it moves you to that next place. That's it. That's it. Lastly, Oprah Winfrey and the book that Spirit gave to me this month. Thank you, Spirit. About Anthony Ray Hinton. She says, in what I know for sure, last summer I invited Anthony Ray Hinton who wrote my 2018 book club pick, The Sun Does Shine, and that he spent nearly 30 years on death row for a crime he didn't commit. His friend Lester, who visited him every week without fail for all those years, came to and brought his wife. That was pretty special, to be able to share the open air, beauty of Hawaii, ocean, sky, mountains, with someone who had been confined to a cell 
almost half his life. But mostly my guests are names who wouldn't know, who you wouldn't know. On any given day or night, there are usually 20 to 25 people gathered, first on the porch to watch the sunset with mocktails and cocktails. I am fed not just by the buffet, which is always overflowing with savory delights, but by the interchange of ideas and values. I know for sure when people gather to share a meal and themselves, joy shows up. So I'm asking each of you to create joy in your life. Because if you create joy for you, then I'm joyful. And from there, it goes out into the world. Thank you all. I love you and support you all. Thank you, Revs. It was awesome, Reverend yeah. Stacy. And I, I discovered a new song, actually, because I wanted to um, fit my song, obviously, into what you were going to say. And I have to say, I did a pretty good job. I don't usually say that. This is a, I don't know if you've ever heard it, and probably not. So this is new to me. It might be new to you. It's a Gladys Knight song. It's called Use My Imagination. It is so great. I love it. And I'm using part track again, and the hubster here, too. <laughs> Keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on. 
we talked about, um, like, okay, we uh, wrote, words are hard. We read two different quotes. One of them was, change your thinking, change your life. And I made a poster of it, and I decorated it with icing, and then I ate the icing. <laughs> and it was really good. <laughs> and, and the other quote was, uh, we have the power to change our, wait, no, what was I it? I am free. I am free to change my own thinking. Right? I am free to choose my own thoughts. I am free to choose my own thoughts. <laughs> By Stacey Hilton. <laughs> okay, she's quoting Stacey. All right. <laughs> please, I am. Uh, please uh, join us for cake after service, and I would like to ask my partner in crime and then truth, Reverend Stacey Hilton, to come up. Yes, you are. I'd like to ask any visiting ministers or practitioners. Exactly. You know, you know which is which. That's all I have to say. Any visiting practitioners, please come forward. And our minister prayer team to please come forward so that you see their shiny faces and you know you can always go to one of them for prayer or just simply to talk. We have our ministry, um, sorry, um, what we call our, what is it called? Our prayer box. God's pocket up here. You can leave a prayer request and there's also one in the Grand Hall. If you so choose. If you want to stand and connect, that would be awesome as Reverend Stacy gives us a benediction. Thank you. So if you would, if you would just close your eyes with me. I breathe in all of that energy. An energy of love and light. <sighs> yes, as Taya quoted me. <laughs> Each of us is free to choose our thoughts, which change our thinking, which change our lives. And so when we find ourselves in something that we don't want to be in, a condition, then that is the place where we choose to use that creative principle of spirit to move into that which we do want. It's as simple as that. As Mary Morrissey says, if you want to imagine something in something, if you want to imagine something not in a certain way, then imagine it not to be that way. That's the way you got it there in the first place. So with that, I just know that each and every person has a wonderful, wonderful Sunday and rest of their week until we meet again. Each person creates that which they want to create. And when they happen to find themselves not creating that, they create something different. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as that. So I just say thank you, thank you, thank you for all that was created here this morning. That touched minds and touched hearts lifted spirits, and inspired those of us to do great and grander things in life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I release this word to that perfect law which simply says yes, beloved, yes. And together we say, yes. so it is. Yes.